Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Oxyacetylene Welding, Cutting, and Brazing. Topic number four, job practice. Stringer bead, flat position, without and with filler metal. The objective of this practice is to be able to produce a weld bead on a plate in the flat position without and with the use of filler metal. This topic is intended to teach both torch and filler metal manipulation for control of the weld puddle. The finished weld without filler metal should be flat to slightly concave and slightly convex when filler metal is used. Both welds should have no edge weld undercut and should be 3 8 inch wide. On a blueprint or an engineering drawing, the symbol for this weld would appear as follows. Deposit a surfacing weld on the top surface of the plate to a height of 1 16th inch using the oxyacetylene process. The material required for this job practice is 11 gauge mild steel and 3 32 inch diameter filler metal type RG45. The equipment consists of an oxygen and acetylene supply and necessary equipment such as hoses and regulators, protective clothing, gloves and goggles, a striker for lighting the torch and a pair of pliers, a torch tip with an orifice size number 56, and a tip cleaner of the proper size, also number 56. The gas working pressure settings are oxygen, six pounds per square inch, and acetylene, six pounds per square inch. The flame is adjusted to a neutral setting. The workpiece for this practice consists of a single piece of 11 gauge mild steel plate placed on fire bricks in the flat position. For this and all other wells, pay close attention to the six essential factors for producing quality welds. Flame. Make sure you have the proper mixture of gases and valve adjustment for producing the desired flame type and size. Joint preparation. For whatever type of workpiece you weld, ensure that the base metal is clean and prepared properly and is in the correct position for welding. Torch angles. Maintain the recommended work and travel angles for the entire length of the weld. Travel speed. Travel at a rate that will produce the desired puddle width. Inner cone distance. Maintain the proper distance between the inner cone of the flame and the work for the full length of the weld. And filler rod addition. Ensure that the area where you add the metal is hot enough to melt the rod and that you add it to the correct portion of the puddle. All of these factors must be maintained consistently for the full length of all welds made with this process. It is helpful to practice moving the torch down the length of the plate without flame to be sure you can maintain correct distance, angles, and travel speed while arriving at a comfortable position. Right-handed welders move the torch from right to left. And left-handed welders move the torch from left to right. You should now be ready to set the gas pressures, light the torch, and adjust to a neutral flame with an inner cone about 3 8 inch long. Position the inner cone at the end of the plate, approximately 1 8 inch from the surface. Adjust to a 90 degree work angle as viewed along the axis of the weld path so that the torch tip is perpendicular to the plate. Then lean the tip back to a 35 to 40 degree push travel angle, meaning that the tip is pointing in the direction of travel as if pushing the puddle along. Use a slight side-to-side -side motion to form the weld puddle 
and then travel in a straight line, holding the correct torch angles and inner cone distance. Adjust your rate of travel to maintain a puddle about three-eighths of an inch wide. Be careful not to move too slowly or set the flame too high or you will melt completely through the metal. A narrow uneven bead is the opposite case. The travel speed was too fast or the flame was set too low. If the tip orifice is dirty or too hot, which happens if the flame is too close to the work, or held in one spot too long, the flame might pop or go out. Practice this weld for a while until you can produce a consistent straight 3 8 inch weld for the entire length of the plate. Now, deposit the same weld with the use of filler metal. The torch angles, distance and travel speed are the same as before. The filler metal rod is held over the weld line and angled 35 to 40 degrees upwards. The same as the torch angle, but in the opposite direction. Hold the end of the filler rod near the flame about one quarter inch. As the puddle forms, begin dipping the end of the rod into the center of the puddle. When a drop of metal melts off, pull the rod out of the puddle slightly. Continue to add filler metal in the same manner for the entire length of the plate while maintaining a consistent 3 8 inch wide puddle. Not adding enough filler metal will cause the weld to be uneven and underfilled. Too much filler metal will make the weld oversized with overlap along the toes. With practice, however, you will be able to develop a steady rhythm that will produce a slightly convex, evenly rippled weld bead.